you begin your cheese board, choose a large board of your choice. I found this particular one at Home Goods. They have a lot of great sizes and options. Next, I headed to Trader Joe's to pick up the cheeses. They have an excellent supply of tons of different varieties and you cannot beat the cost. I picked up a few different types. I chose six because I was having a rather large group of girls at my house and knew that they would all love cheese. So I chose a variety of both hard and soft cheeses. These happen to be a few of my favorites that you can pick up at Trader Joe's. It's always fun to try new types, but also make sure you keep it simple with a few classics like goat cheese and brie. It's always nice to pair your cheeses with meats, so for this time I chose a salami with a little bit of spice, red chili peppers, and a sliced prosciutto. I think it's important to have a variety of crackers because you never know what your guests are going to like. So I picked up some rice crackers because they're gluten free and these fun pistachio pomegranate crisps and then this assortment pack that has just the four different varieties inside. To fancy up your cheese board, I always like to add a dried fruit. I love these dried cherries as well as a couple different types of nuts. Make sure to add a fresh fruit to your board like apple or pear. A few specialty items like this hot pepper jelly and this fresh local honeycomb will make your board a complete standout. The salty component, I always add fresh olives or olive tapenade. Now it's time to prep your board. So you're gonna to wanna to open all of your cheeses and place them strategically with enough space between them all around your board. With some of the harder cheeses, I like to pre-slice some pieces for the guests so that it is easier on them to be able to grab when they're near your cheese board. Another tip on making it easy for your guests is to separate all the meats. So peel the salami in advance, stack them in a few different places around the board, and then for the prosciutto, I like to cut them in half and then roll them. That way they are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing instead of just a bunch of meat thrown on a board. Cheese boards can often take a lot of time, so I prepped this board in advance and kept that in the fridge covered before my event later that evening. About 30 minutes before the guests arrive, I like to finish the board, so I like to place all the different types of crackers a few different places around the board. To finish it off, make sure you add your honey, your jam, and all your extra garnishes like your nuts and your dried fruit. Fill it in the little crevices between all the different types of cheeses and meats and give it a good look over. My last step is to add some fresh herbs like rosemary or sage on your board in areas that it looks like it could use a little pop of green. It makes it pretty and appetizing. And my final step is slicing the pear and the apple very thinly and placing it around the board. That way it is fresh and not brown. And that's it. Step back, take a good look at your board, and watch how your guests absolutely gush and dive into that cheese board. I hope these tips help you make a beautiful and fun cheese board for your next event or holiday gathering. Enjoy!